Today, we're going to talk about something very exciting at this UFO meeting of UFO Research New South Wales. It's the biggest UFO in history. An update on three uh, atlas, which I call the greatest USO unidentified space object in modern history. And it's a USO, it's not a UFO. And this was a picture of it from just a few days ago in the stars. And you see it here. It sort of looks like a comet. It's green here due to nickel. It's blue here with this big long tail. And there's this very funny thing sticking in front of it, which is not natural whatsoever. Let's zoom in on the next slide. There it is. Look at that thing. You see, this is the green nickel, like a nickel alloy, like we coat steel. And look at this funny beam going out in front of it. Do you know what that looks like? I'll tell you in a second. Like a needlefish or a swordfish? You can't really tell what this is yet, but let's continue. Now, a few months ago, before that image, there was a leaked image of 3ILS on the internet, and nobody knew whether it was real or not. And do you know what it showed? It looked like it showed some metallic structure in here. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? It's the same thing we just saw a second ago, except you see these other things flying along with it, one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like it has other little spaceships flying along with it. And this is a big thing here. Now that's unverified, but this happened before the other one. So how do they know how to fake it? I don't know, let's keep going. So let's listen to Ray, who's one of the best amateur photographers, and see what he says. Even though it looks like a comet, once you reduce the brightness of the comet, if you definitely zoom in, there is a possibility of seeing a bit of a structure there. Okay, we have a structure there, let's go. So let's look at that structure now in closer detail. Is everybody interested? Yes. I'm interested. Yes. So we got to study it. So <laughs> the first thing is we see a narrow green anti-tail, and you know what it's saying? Facing into the wind. It's blowing into the solar wind. Let's go ahead. And you see that thing here? That's the sun over here. It's blowing into the wind. How's it going into the wind? The next, the next thing we see, a broad blue tail that's away from the wind. Now we expect the comet to have it away from the wind. Let's look at it. There it is. But it's going in a lot of different places. That's very funny. Have you ever seen a comet that looks like that? I never have. Let's look at a close up of that one. It looks like an iron propulsion with six little jets or engines. Let's go ahead. Like that. Shoo! Pretty cool, isn't it? Do you think that's cool? Mm -hmm. I'm working on this. This is like argon gas or xenon gas or something being shot out. Now let's study this a little bit further. This is iron propulsion from NASA. Click ahead. Now this is a close one. You have to see it. This is an authentic atlas. This is the thing in front and out back with these little six jets. This is an independent image by several different people going in different directions. So that really looks like sort of like Elon Musk engine with all the six engines. So it can't really be a comet. No comet would do this. Let's go. Now that narrow green anti-tail looks like a Star Trek deflector beam. And you see on Star Trek, there it is. See that thing there? Keep on. Keep on. And there it is. That's what they see on Star Trek. Turn on the deflector dish, Scotty. <laughs> and there's the green beam coming out of turn it green. And then what that does is, is, is the starship goes very fast. It gets rid of the meteorites in its way like an icebreaker. Otherwise, they're going to be hitting the craft. It's going about 130 k an hour. So it's like a deflector to protect the craft as it's going forward. There's no possible way that's a natural thing. Next one. Now, perhaps it has two tails, three on Atlas, one in front and one behind, for a good physical reason. In the opposite directions, and if you have two tails, you can stay in the same place using Newton's third law. Like when you fire a shotgun, it hits your shoulder. If you didn't have the hold up your shoulder, you'd go somewhere else. So you have two forces holding one another in the same place. Just like in a boat. This is one tail, that's the other tail. And that's how it holds them in one place. So you need two of them, one in front and one behind. Front three projection. That's right. And here's the tail left and the six behind. So that's my theory of the physics of how it works. Now, here's something that's going to shock you. This is Ray's discovered this. They don't tell you this anywhere. It's spinning very rapidly, perhaps to create artificial gravity. Now, I want you to watch the next video. We'll show twice. Can you start it, Paul? Watch this. Look what it turns out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? 
You see it spinning? Is that good? Can you see it spinning? Clockwise. Is it still spinning? Spinning clockwise. Whichever way you see, I can't really see it from here. It's got a little bit of an anti-clockwise. It's done both. It's done both. Anyway, it's spinning. Okay. This way. Yeah. Clockwise. Yeah. Okay. Now, it's, now let's zoom it. Let's go ahead and look at the next picture. Uh, next one is. Now let's look at Ray talk about. It. He's the best amateur photographer. I never saw any comet doing this. I have seen comets sending stuff in the bag, and I have seen the tail. I can see the sublimation. I can see, I can see the sublimation. I can see dust tail growing. I can see like how the solar system comets behave. But I never saw a comet spinning this way with all the gas, dust, everything around. And you know what? Neither has anybody else. <laughs> next slide, please. Now, where is it going next? Next it's going in front of Jupiter. And there it is. And what Avi Loeb says it's going next to something called the Hill Radius, where if it releases any satellites there, they'll go in orbit around Jupiter quite easily. So it's an orbital, or it's possibly an orbital insertion orbit to get near the Jupiter's moons. That's where it's going now. It's about there now. It'll be there by the end of January. Next slide, please. So might we be facing an alien threat? Well, you know, it's just an alien threat. Let's see some commentary on it. I don't know if it's something coming or a natural disaster. You hear of something big coming down the pike. Have you heard of these claims? And if so, do you have any idea what it may be? Yes, I've heard of them. Yes, I'm aware of them, and I'm not able to have that conversation. To the extent you can talk about what might be in there, what is in there? Time is not a luxury that we can afford. We, we, if the time comes, we need to start having the conversation collectively. We should, should have a while ago. We, we really need to. We really need to start. Having the conversation. Okay. Okay. So that's the end of the first one. So what you've seen here is the current status of 3i Atlas, what we know. We don't know what's going to happen, but this is, do you think this is something which you're watching very closely? Yeah. Watching it very closely. And I'd say the odds are that it is artificial. And this morning, I didn't have time to change the video. I got here on the train. Some professional astronomers have taken a very close-up object from satellite in space. And do you know what the shape of that little white thing is? It's a cube. So it's not round, it's like a big cube shape. It's very shiny, and so you think of the Borg cube or something like that. It's five kilometers on each side. So we're waiting to see if that's confirmed by further telescopic measurements. And you can see they just want to be covering something up. I don't know what it is, but I just have a feeling this is natural. Thank you very much. Which way would it be spinning? Uh, it's spinning on parallel to the axis. Yes, axis of orbit projection. So it's spinning around there, and that'll create artificial gravity. Are there any really quick questions? We have to end this uh, when's it going to be? Oh, I know it's going to be far away from Earth, but when's it in line? Is it going to be Earth? It's never going to hit Earth directly, but it's headed for yeah. Jupiter. After it goes to Jupiter, nobody knows what's going to happen. But it's going to be in line with the Earth, I mean, from a distance. It can still come back from Jupiter. The 21st. Uh, It'll, no, it's still going past. It's not going to come hit Earth. Yeah, yeah. But once it gets to Jupiter, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're waiting for next. So the closest is the 16th of December, the closest to the Earth? Not 19th. 19th. And there'll be more photographs coming. Hopefully they won't cover them all off. Hor Horace, have you, have you heard the latest with the Chinese government? What no. they released? Okay. So all things being released every day, and they're spreading everywhere, not putting in the news, but as long as professional astronomers are releasing something, it's probably reliable. Would it, so, be, would it be affecting the weather? It affected the sun when it went by. It shot, like, it shot lots of solar storms because yeah. the thing's probably very magnetic. Yeah. And it changed the magnetic field of sun. All sorts of stuff shot out at it. It's again not a comet. So uh, the odds of this being a natural are very low, and the odds of it being artificial are now like 8 or 9 out of 10.